Thank you, Sandra. Good morning, everyone. Wait for the presentation to come. Let me tell you that this is a report on some of the actions or activities that we have we conducted last year in 2021 that were designed for the community and the members. You are very well aware of them because these are activities I'm sure many of you participated in. So let me start by reminding you that we had two events, two annual events. The first event was online, LECNIC 35 was absolutely online. And the good news for the second event last year, last October, is that we started with our first hybrid experience, but with a smaller scale, at a smaller scale. We were where our venue was in Montevideo, so we had some people in Uruguay, some people that could travel, and we had a remote hub in Pergamino in Argentina, and a very good attendance at the two events, with approximately a 1,000 people attending each. And as events for us, are a very important space because it is where we can meet even online and where we can interact and it is the time when we make the most of synergies and we also try to learn and to, to get better qualified we work to continuously improve our events we are constantly looking at satisfaction surveys we gradually improve things to improve your experience. And last year, we worked to simplify access to the event. In Zoom, if you remember, with a single access in the past, you received it in uh, the mail, and now you have a single access. And also increasing the number of uh, participation channels. That is something that you expressed in the service. In the second part of the year, we worked for the first hybrid experience so that we could have people participating online and in person. So we had to mount like a TV studio so that we could have panelists that are not with us physically. So there you have some results of the satisfaction survey that you answered about the general satisfaction with the event, the agenda, the contents, and the response rate. That's is uh, usually around 30 percent. So I invite you all to help us answer the survey when you receive it, because it's very important. As you can see, there were high levels of satisfaction, so we're very pleased to continue improving this so that you can perceive it as that. We were very active in the sense of policy development. 14 proposals were discussed from these nine discussed changes in the process, the policy development process, and four were changes to the mandate. Only one out of the 14 proposals reached consensus and was ratified by the board. Last year was a very important year in the sense of implementation. Three proposals were implemented that required adjustments in the systems, RPKI ROA, rowers with ASN0, registration and validation of abuse contact and update on recovering and resource return and consistency with the rest of the manual. We opened the mic microphone for people who participated remotely and for in-person participants. We had like a tri-dimensional event promoting everyone's participants. In the October event, a working group was created in the framework of the policy development process. The chairs convened these groups to work on two policy proposals that had to do with the election process of the chairs. These were quite similar. The authors integrated a group of the community to merge these into one single proposal, which we will likely present at the October event this year. Regarding Campus LACNIC, this is the training platform, the online training platform. Last year, we had eight different courses. Today, we have more courses. We had 16 editions of these different courses. We're interested in listening to the opinion of those who participate in these courses. That is why we ask for um, feedback. 
survey last year. We relaunched the basic IPv6 courses. Maybe some of you took that course. This was relaunched, relaunched with some of the updates, not only updates in terms of contents, but also improvements in improving the experience regarding the use of this course. Throughout the year, we had more than 7,000 students who participated in these 16 editions. 46% finished the courses. It is also interesting to know that about 4,000 of the 7,000 students chose courses related to IPv6. We also offer webinars in 2021. At the beginning of the year, we published an agenda on activities so that the community could organize itself to know when these webinars would be available. This was a very important tool, particularly during the two years of the pandemic when we had to interact online during those webinars. What we did as part of the improvement was to incorporate simultaneous interpretation into different languages, which is something we didn't have in the past. So now we can offer these webinars in Spanish, English, and Portuguese. About 1,000 people participated in the different webinars on different topics, IPv6, security, routing, RPKI, and issues related to strategic relations, etc. During 2021, we participated in the coordination She corrects herself in the program Raices, Roots. We are coordinators between the organizations that volunteer to have an Anycast server, a root server, and LACNIC collaborates in between. For this program Mas Raices, we make an open call to those who wish to volunteer to be a host of these Anycast services. The call is opened in March and is closed in May, so all the Latin American organizations who are interested in hosting one of these should please contact LACNIC so that we can, con so that we can collaborate with you. Last year, servers were installed in Buenos Aires, in Suriname, in Guatemala, and in Lima, Peru. Let me also tell you about some of the new things that happened in 2021 on the Pr FRIDA program. In 2021, and also in the context of the pandemic that we had, we thought it was important to double our efforts in terms of funding projects in the entire region aimed at using and deploying internet for different uses and to strengthen the growth of the entire region. These are different projects in different categories. We duplicated the available funds to support these community projects. We also brought the FRIDA topics closer to the associates. In 2019, we funded the program entirely in order to bring these topics closer to the community. Last year, we had 200 people candidates. The expert, the jury of experts selected 17 initiatives, three in, as a prize and 14 were subsidies. And I wanted to tell you about some of the winning options. There is a funds available for the University of Colima, the Technology, Technology Center of Colombia, and then Internet Security on this topic, Traffic Monitoring and IXP in the Caribbean, and DDoS Attack Mitigation. The FRIDA program is open and is open to organizations in the regions who seek funding on stability and security, access and internet connectivity, and open and free internet. At LACNIC's booth, 
the coordinator of the program will be there. For those of you who are interested in knowing what the process, how the process takes place, and also the implementation of these projects. So that would be all. Thank you for your attention. These are things we did last year, and you were the protagonist. It's important to, important to review these. And I'm here if you have any questions, or also online questions. There are no questions so far. So they tell me there are no questions so far. So back to you, Sandra. See you during the coffee break. So applause is for, round of applause for Laura. Thank you to all of you who participated in this blog. We're going to have a long break now, but prior to that, I'd like to thank our sponsors because without them, this blog would not have been possible. So I'm going to read these out. Nick BR, Meta, Google, Netflix, M. Cali, Ufinet, Renata, Pro Colombia, PIT Chile, ISOC, Amazon Web Services, IP Broker, Academia IPv6, OSI, DHD, M6, and IPv4 Global. To all our sponsors, thank you very much once again. We'll now have a break until 11.30, and we resume with LACNIC's Technical Forum.